them, then it will befall us. But indeed, all who delight in piety and are determined to live a devoted and godly life in Christ Jesus, you will, you will meet with persecution. You will be made to suffer for your religious stand. But the wicked men and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and leading astray others and being deceived and led astray themselves. But as for you, continue to hold to the things that you have learned and of which you are convinced, knowing from whom you learned them and how from your childhood you have had a knowledge of and been acquainted with the sacred writings which you, which are able to instruct you and give you the understanding for salvation. See, the devil's biggest lie is that the Bible is not true. But if it were not true, why is he so hardly, you know, so hard at trying to keep you from it? Every distraction, every activity, every event, phone calls, doorbell, you know, dogs barking, <laughs> amen, right? All these things trying to keep you from reading the word of God, studying the word of God. People, friends, you know, people who you, you don't even really want to associate with, right? All of a sudden, you get ready to read the Bible and doorbell rings, phone ring, you know, emails, you got to check. Oh, you got to check those emails, right? text messages, all that. If, if the Bible weren't so important, then why does the devil want to keep you from it? If the Bible was not so important, if the Bible was not true, why is there so much effort to undermine the Bible? If, 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 if being a Christian and walking with the Lord were really, you know, just, just nothing, those people are nothing, nobody, you know, no, they're no consequence. They're no, why, why is there so much effort being made to attack Christians, to attack what they believe, to attack the Bible, to destroy the Bible? The word of God says that there will be one day when the Bible will be taken away. You won't have the word. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. And Lord, help us if, if, if it's not here. But the Bible was given so that we can learn from it, so that we can have the understanding. For what? For salvation. For salvation, says verse 15, which comes through faith in Christ Jesus, through the leaning of the entire human personality on God. That, that, that puts aside all the idolatry, that puts aside that self-love and self-deceit, that puts aside the pride and the arrogance, that puts aside all the, 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 the graven images and the carved uh, statues, that puts aside the, you know, the lucky, uh, the, the rabbit's foot and the coin and the this and the that, and the, you know, all these other things that people are running after that have nothing to do with the worship of the true God. The Bible says here, if you are putting your faith in Christ Jesus, that is leaning of the entire human personality on God in Christ Jesus, in absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and his goodness. For every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for instruction, for reproof, and conviction of sin, and for correction of errors, and discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity through God's will, and get this, in thought, purpose, and action. So that the man of God may be complete. If you are a child of God, whether you're a male or a female, you are a man of God or a woman of God. You don't have to have a collar on. You don't have to have a robe that designates you. You're not wearing you know, a habit or whatever else, you know, the garb.
garb is for, for some of these uh, offices, you don't have to have those things. If you are, if you have received and accepted the truth of our Lord and Savior, then you are a child of God. And therefore, in order for you to be complete in him, you have to give your whole human personality over to him. That's why the scripture says often that we have to die to ourselves, right? Die to all those things that the self wants and has to have. Give me, give me, give me, have to have. I want, I want, you know, all that. I suffer from it. I'm going to tell you right now. But, I, but it's a struggle, right? It's a fight that you, that you welcome, the challenge that you welcome, because you know that the prize at the end, the walk with God, is more than sufficient, right? And so that's why we study. That's why we learn. That's why we share. That's why iron sharpens iron. You teach me and I teach you, and we share what we've learned so that we may become more complete and proficient well-fitted, in other words, well-equipped for every good work. And the word also tells us that we should have, we should be ready, instant, in season and out of season. We should be ready with a word and an answer from the Lord. Why? How can we be ready? Because we have studied and read. You know, those people that, you know, uh, people that are able to talk about a scripture here or there, you know, or some, a lot of people out there that can memorize them, you know. Well, how did they, how did that happen? Well, obviously, they had to be exposed to it. How did you become good at whatever it is you do? Running, cooking, dancing, singing. Because you practice it. But did you do all of that other stuff in place of God? Opposed to God? Is all that other stuff so much more important, as the scripture says, that you did it rather than to be a lover of God? Because what did, what did the scripture say? All of that is for naught. All that's for naught. You, you may be a virtuoso, piano, opera, dance, sports, and all that stuff. But if you don't have God, if God is not in it, if God didn't begin it, because he said he is the author and the finisher. He is the author and the finisher. The author and the finisher. So if God is not in it, if you have rejected God, if you keep denying God, it's all for naught. The scripture said here we just read it, it's folly. It's folly. You're wasting your time. Solomon said it's all vanity. All vanity. A waste of time. So I pray that you have had an opportunity to let these words and these scriptures sink into your mind. And I pray that you can um, study and pray and meditate on them so that you may not be a foolish woman or man, amen, and invite in all those kinds of people coming in to destroy Satan, because remember that's his goal, steal, steal your joy, kill, kill your emotion, yourself, your personality, your self-esteem, and destroy. Destroy your home, your family, your job, your body, your mind. All to keep you from worshiping our Lord and Savior. The devil is not playing. The devil is very bold and the, de and the devil is, 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 <laughs> is uh, I mean, he's, he, he is an enemy that is, you know, when the scripture says he's subtle and deceitful, and treacherous is because he, he connives his way in and around and through your life. The very the very thing you think, you know, that you, well, I'm not going to stay away from this one. I'm not going to listen to that one. Well, they may be trying to tell you the truth. 
but because you have been so depraved and deprived of the truth, because you have not worshipped the truth and studied the truth that is the truth within God, Christ Jesus, then, then you don't even recognize the truth. That's what the scripture just said. You don't even recognize it. So if, if you don't even recognize the truth, how are you, you going to be able to follow the truth? You have to get back to, you have to come out of the world. The Lord said, come out of Babylon, come out of the world, come out of those fake churches, come out of that fake religion, come out of those fake practices, come out of those fake things that draw you away from God, come out of those treacherous behaviors, those sinful thoughts and actions, come away from those, separate yourself from that and unto God. Because the Lord said in Psalms 127, except that the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. The Almighty God is the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the creator of all that is and was and is to be. And so if you don't include him, then you're laboring in vain. If you don't include him in your house, in your marriage, in your children, in your child rearing, in your relationships, in your job, then you're laboring in vain. Why is it that so many people today are, 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 are how do they say that, um, uh, uh, I forget the saying now, um, but so many people today are you know, paycheck to paycheck, right? There are so many people today that can't make ends meet. Making all the money, making sometimes more money than they've ever made and still can't keep up with their expenses, right? Why is that? We're paying, uh, what is that? Paying, P robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? You're laboring in vain. You're wondering why, well, I don't want to tithe. I don't want to give to the church. I don't want to give to anybody. I'm going to keep everything. I'm going to hoard everything. I'm going to store up everything. And I'm wondering why you don't have enough to spend on or wondering why, or you, you, with that attitude, that same attitude, all four tires have gone out. That same attitude, two or three cars have broken down and been lost and been stolen. And, you know, houses have broken in. All the, with that kind of attitude, as we spoke about before, nothing can flow through you, number one. God's giving you and, and, and allowing you and giving you needs to flow through you because a stagnant river stinks. Amen? Just like a stagnant house stinks. It's like a stagnant mind stinks. A stagnant personality is stinky. A stagnant uh, digestive system is stinky. Amen. <laughs> right? But, 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 but if the Lord is not in control, if the Lord is not involved, then you, you're, you're doing it all for nothing. You're going to work your fingers to the bone and never get ahead. Because the Lord's not involved. So many people are running around making plans. I'm going to do this, do that, do that. Never thought to include God. A lot of people that made plans for today are, are, are on a cooling board somewhere. A lot of people made plans for today are not with us. So we have to put God first. We have to involve God in it. We have to seek God because he knows the future. He holds the future in his hand. Why wouldn't you go to the person who has the answers? Instead, we're always seeking, what does the scripture say in 2 Timothy 3? Always seeking, always inquiring, always getting information, and never recognizing the truth. I'd like to share something with you um, from some of my readings as we close. And it's, it's almost startling when you hear this. Uh, when you hear it and and, um, and and really let it sink in. Here's the first first uh, saying. This this uh, I, I I don't really know. I don't know who actually said it, but uh, it makes so much sense. The only barrier to knowing truth is to assume you already know it. The only barrier to knowing truth is to assume you already know it. Then, I was looking, listening to a teacher a few weeks ago, and he said that there are three phases to truth. 